geopolitics of critical minerals now to obtain these critical minerals we are now going for deep sea mining now deep sea mining why we are going for it the idea is very simple when the resources on the land are getting limited and there is a resource crunch we are trying to explore more areas from the where these resources could be obtained so this is under the ratification of the un convention for laws of seas however united states has not signed this and cannot be the part of the race to mine waters for deep sea exploration india russia and china are on the lead india is getting a support from russia to develop technologies for deep sea mining two of the main areas where we have involved ourselves is the poly uh, one is the polymetallic nodules now these nodules are mainly cobalt nickel copper and manganese and they are thousands of uh, meters below the surface so cobalt nickel copper and manganese are important and these are useful for renewable sources of energy again india has targeted to become 50% uh, dependent on renewable sources of energy by 2030 and become zero emission uh, country by 2070 so in order to achieve this we definitely need to have more critical resources uh, which we can have at our own um, availability and this would be useful for developing the cleaner technologies in india now uh, the explorations have been going on in the regions of indian ocean ridge uh, countries like china germany south korea along with india have been working forward for it the indian national institute of ocean technology has provided mining machines uh, to understand and have um, mining in the deep sea areas to understand the polymetallic nodules and this is one of the such examples of polymetallic nodules that are present now what is important to understand is even we are talking about polymetallic sulfides which is pms now polymetallic sulfides are different from polymetallic nodules nodules we already studied so under the polymetallic sulfides it is mainly copper sulfide zinc gold and mercury uh, sorry iron that is obtained and these would fall under the sulfide form so they are present as sulfides under the deep sea and these could be extracted so um, there have been lot of explorations going on in the regions of central indian ocean mainly the fnsi nikitin uh, sea mount and the polymetallic nodules in the kalsbridge um, kalsberg uh, ridge so these are the areas where the mining has been going on now this is the area for the polymetallic nodules this is the area as you can see in the map for polymetallic sulfides and these lie close to india where indian um, uh, indian explorations have been done now we have found the applications for uh, the polymetallic sulfide so far but there is another country which has filed the application so international seabed authority is yet to identify who is the right stake for that and accordingly the decisions would be taken forward for now uh, some of the major countries for example australia is the major producer for lithium china is the major producer for copper china predominates mainly in the graphite production in the rare earth which is used for uh, smartphones and um, uh, these um, computing equipments right so uh, there are even technologies which have been developed and currently 100% of the natural graphite and diasporism which is being um, seen by or explored by china 70% of cobalt and nearly 60% of lithium and manganese for that the supply chain control has been taken by china so india definitely needs to go way forward to have an understanding of the critical minerals which is present in the deep uh, sea reservoirs and these could be one of the reasons where we could site for more cleaner and greener technologies but again countries like uk uh, countries like germany have been working uh, saying that we are exploring deep sea areas but we are still unsure of the harm that it could cause to the environment so basically there has been a constant debate with environmentalists regarding these explorations and this geopolitics again plays a major role if india is applying for the polymetallic sulfides is accepted then india would have uh, near to russia uh, the amount of um, um, the 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 licenses that 
India has and nearly one less than China. So those are some of the important things that we have discussed in this section. But these topics really play an important role in your prelims and they are important case studies to substantiate your answers in your mains answer writing. So stay tuned and definitely connect back for any queries or clarification. Thanks for joining us.